Hello there, my name is Brother Raymond, and you are listening to the Power Station. Your Power Station. The Lord's Power Station. Ray and D's Power Station. Well, thank you for joining us. The time here is 12.45 in the afternoon, and we are experiencing a tornado watch. But we're still going to do the work of the Lord, because he says that we have many ways to stop the enemy's work. This podcast is number 17, and it's entitled The 144,000. And we're going to be reading from Revelation chapter 7. And we're going to keep reading until the Holy Ghost tells us when to stop. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now we have a precept. It is Jeremiah 49, verse 36. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters, heaven, and will scatter them towards all those winds, and there shall be no nation where the outcasts of Elam shall not come. So the Lord has done this before. He's used the angels to hold the winds of the earth. Here's another precept in Zechariah 6.5, referencing the messengers. Because that's what angels are. They are messengers. And the angel answered and said to me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. These are the angels. Same angels that are talked about who are working with the 144,000. Okay, let's head back to Revelation 7 verse 2 and i saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now let's look at another precept. It's in Ezekiel 9, verse 4. But uh, let's go back to see what the story is about. Uh, the title is, see, the abominations in Jerusalem. Ezekiel 9, 1 through 4. Chapter 9, verse 1. Let's go back to 1 and stop at 4. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charged over the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the high gate, which lies towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherubim, whereupon he was of the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And uh, we have... uh, Another precept it sends us back to Revelation 7, 3, where we're reading right now. So the Bible sends you back. You see how it, how it encompasses itself in full circle? 
Halleluja. Also, there is another precept. It's in Revelation 9.4. Let's go back to Revelation 9.1 and, and see the picture here, what's taking place. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but, but that, that they should, should be tormented, tormented by the months. months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Okay, let's head back to Revelation 7, 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephilim were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zebulon was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed twelve thousand. After this, I beheld a lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying to me, What are these which are heirs? in white robes. And from where came they? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. 
For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them to living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Excuse me while I turn the page. Revelation chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven above the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given to him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Let me put my hand on the list and pray for everybody, including the body of Christ and our family members. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Lord, we decree and declare and we pray that you would win every battle for the people of God. Thank you, Lord. We pray also that you would stand up and, and battle for us, raise up a standard and take down the bulwarks of Satan. We ask that you would remind us to put on the whole armor of God, that we would wear it valiantly in battle, quoting the word. In the name of Jesus, putting on the boots of peace and the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth, the shield of faith, that we would use the sword, which is your word, and then we would pray constantly in the name of Jesus. Unceasingly is the word that I would like to use. Unceasingly on your behalf and on behalf of all of those that we're praying for right now. Send your fire down onto the earth, into our hearts. That we would burn for you and not be ashamed of you, Lord, in any way. That we'd go out and spread the gospel using the gifts and talents and the things that you've put in us to be successful at that. We also pray, O Lord, that you would call us and seal us in our foreheads, Those of us who are worthy. that you would make us strong like Samson, that we would not fall to the temptations of Delilah, which are the temptations of this world, that we would drink your living water, <laughs> 
Bup, 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 bup. <laughs> we would drink. <laughs> drink in your living water. Send your deliverance, Lord, in every way. And fill us with your spirit. And uh, continue, O oh Lord, to be greater than any other God, which you have no problem doing. Cause our hearts to be there with you as we are on earth and in the heavens. Pray this prayer that we would also be successful in the thing that you've called us to do on the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for those of you who want to be saved and want to live out your life on the earth, winning souls on behalf of the Most High Living God, repeat after me. Raise your right hand. Father, I have sinned and I no longer want to sin anymore. I want to be like you. I want to follow you and, and uh, follow your ways. I would like to go deeper in the things that have been hidden from me, oh Lord, for so many years. And I would like for you to prepare a place for me when it's all said and done in heaven. And to meet all the souls that I had a privilege in winning on your behalf. Amen. If you said that prayer, now born again, you got to get busy. You got to read the word, precept upon precept, here, there, here a little, there a little. <laughs> and uh, get to know the Lord and win souls. Thank you. Please let us keep Taiwan in our prayers. They just experienced a 7.4 earthquake. And um, people are suffering there right now, so... Let's continue to keep them in our prayers. In fact, let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask, O oh Lord, that you restore what the enemy has taken from them, Lord. And uh, let it come back to them sevenfold and cause them to know you even more than ever. O oh Lord, that they would begin to call on your name and to begin to ask, for forgiveness if there's any great sin in their life cause them to turn to you Lord help them right now Lord bring restoration again and again to them in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen Found 
his immortal strength At the Coliseum Where he was He brought the house down Sure didn't tell no jokes <laughs> Sure didn't play this here guitar Samson and the ladder To people with the Bible Samson and Delilah Read all about it Samson and Delilah True story Samson and Delilah Read all about it Judges 13 to 16 Samson and Delilah Brother, you must not foresee your destiny. You must do the thing. God has called you to walk out on the earth. You must complete your mission. Hallelujah. 